Hi, my name is Emma, and let's talk to Rory Culkin. <laughs> Hi friends, last week I reviewed The Last Thing Mary Saw spoiler free. You can see that link in the description down below if you want to check that video out. And this week I got the opportunity to talk to Rory Culkin, so I asked him a ton of questions. I'm not gonna lie, I was so nervous. I'm such a fan. <laughs> I'm not gonna cut out the nervousness because it is quite awkward and fun and I'm a fan. I don't think of myself as a presenter or anything like that. I think of myself as a fan and this is definitely... <laughs> This definitely shows that. But Rory is so sweet and he's worked on some of my favorite projects. He worked on Signs, M. Night, uh, Lords of Chaos, which is one of my, I don't know, it's like life changing for me, that film, which is so weird to say. But if you know the history with me in that film, you'll understand that. Uh, of course, he was in Scream 4, he was in Waco, he was in Castle Rock. He has a really unique presence in films and uh, now he is in The Last Thing Mary Saw and his presence in that is very unique. And I just love his style. I, yeah, big fan. So I was lucky enough to sit down with him and really pick his brains about horror. And also I did put him on the spot and ask him what his three favorite horror movies are. And one of them was quite surprising. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hi, um, thank you so much for your time today, Rory. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I really like uh, some of the darker roles that you've done. Lords of Chaos, um, obviously Scream 4, and now The Last Thing Mary Saw. Uh, do you enjoy these more like complicated and darker roles? Like what kind of draws you to that? Let me first just say I'm a fan of yours, your channel. Um, what? I remember, I remember you did a review, uh, you did a pretty thoughtful review of Lords of Chaos. And I remember yeah. I saw it and, and yeah, I've been watching your stuff since. So I'm big Oh big my fan. God. Um, yeah, I'm a huge, but, obviously, yeah. Lords of Chaos was uh, life-changing. Um, and it's such, it's such a weird movie to talk about online, obviously, because it was such a backlash for it so it was a really interesting well, time <laughs> yeah I, I normally don't like watch reviews or anything but with lords of chaos it seemed like it was going to be so divisive i was so curious so I, I watched like a lot of a lot of stuff so i was really that was the time i was watching reviews um but i appreciated yours um oh, thank you yeah but as far as your your question um i don't i don't know i i, I guess i just i'm just drawn to the the darker stuff uh and I have been since I was a kid. I don't know. I haven't really put much thought into it. I guess it's just what I'm into. It's just a taste thing. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. I mean, I'm into the same thing, yeah. like really dark cinema. Um, so obviously with some of your work it leans into horror um, with the last thing Mary saw and of scream um, and then even science. I like to call that horror. Um, are you a big horror fan? Yeah, I am. And, and I like, I do like the direction it's been going in with the Ari Asters and, and, and those kinds of movies. So I think it's sort of horror is, is I don't know, sort of evolving. And, and, and it seems like it's getting a seat at the adult table now, uh, which is cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan and I'm going to continue to be. Yeah. Is there any subgenres or topics that you kind of gravitate towards in horror? No, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty open to things. I mean, this, you know, this last thing Mary saw was the 1840s and I'd never done a, a period piece. And, and um, so I'm pretty, pretty open to any kind of, any kind of movie, really. So with this role, um, obviously, you, it was a very dark, <laughs> uh, you have a very dark and wicked character. Um, and I absolutely loved your monologue. Was there anything that you draw inspiration from for that character? Because obviously you do a lot of work that's based on true story or true crime with like Waco um, and Lords of Chaos. Is what did you kind of where did you get that from? It's funny. I was I was, I was talking to the director Eduardo, and um, you know I was I was already working on another job, so I didn't have a lot of time to rehearse with them. But he got a um, a dialect coach who who who. Uh, sent me this recording and it was just him talking for five minutes about uh, things I could watch, things I could read. And um, he told me to watch John Adams with Paul Giamatti. He was like, that's top shelf period piece acting. And um, yeah, so I watched that, which I mean, it, it, that's probably almost a century earlier, but um, yeah, it was just really interesting to watch. And, and also, the film takes place in New York, in the outskirts of New York in the 1840s, and I'm from New York, so that was kind of exciting too to to picture, you know, my great great grandfather 
being on the outskirts and maybe he crossed paths with with my my character so that was an exciting thought too yeah hopefully not yeah and how was working with Isabel Furman I know that you have that really intense scene with her with the bread (laughs) yeah yeah Isabel is so great because I was I was afraid that I was going to leave that set feeling really uncomfortable with myself and like really gross which I did but not half as much as I thought I would because she kept it really light the whole time before and after and was sort of like you know hit me in the arm and don't worry about it and, um so she kind of took the reins with that scene which was the greatest scenario for me um so she was definitely in charge of, of shooting that uh yeah so that she's she's so great and I'm so excited I just read about uh the orphan prequel yeah that's supposed to be coming out soon that's so cool yeah so, amazing yeah. she was so Big great generous. in that I mean you said you were only on set for a couple of days for uh the last thing Mary saw um but how was that production I came in and shot in the very end of the shoot so it was like the last two or three days were my stuff um so I was kind of I didn't know the tone they had set and I was a little nervous about that I didn't know what I was walking into um but then I also had the benefit of playing uh, an intruder so I didn't have to adhere to whatever they were doing and I, I sort of found freedom in that like I can just I, I'm going to invade this movie right now and then, you know, do what I want. Um, and Eduardo, the director, seemed to really enjoy it while we were doing it. And and, and we clicked creatively. So, um, yeah, it was a great experience. And and I'm really happy with the, the final product. It's a really weird, cool experience to watch. Yeah, I had to watch it twice because I felt like I had to understand the structure of it first and then because it kind of like warps into itself and then kind of go back for the messaging. And then when I went back for the messaging, it was so strong. I can't believe I didn't see it at the start, if that makes sense, with all like right, the cleansing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Judith, and Judith, her character and everything is just uh, fascinating to me. I just want to know more. And Eduardo never tells me, you know, he acts like he doesn't even know, but he definitely knows, you know, he knows his own lore. So I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a really cool, really cool project. Um, do you with. prefer um, true crime roles or these more kind of fictionalized pieces? Yeah, I just I it's funny because I've done a couple of the true crime things now, and I actually just got done shooting um, something called Under the Banner of Heaven, which is about <laughs> Mormons in the in the nineteen eighties uh, about a murder that happened there. So yeah, it's 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 becoming a trend, I guess. I don't know. Um, I. What I enjoyed about Waco was the the guy I was playing was on set and could sort of talk me through it. But, you know, then there was Lords of Chaos, which obviously Euronymous was killed, so I I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Um, But, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting new genre to navigate for me. Um, But I think I'm I'm starting to figure it out. uh, And, yeah, I I really enjoy the true crime element. And who doesn't? I mean, those documentaries are tons of fun, too. So I love a good mystery. How do you come across those kinds of projects? Do you kind of sort them out or do you get interested in something and then hear about it? I think at this point, my, you know, my, my agents and stuff sort of, when they come across a project like that, they sort of know to send it in my direction. And and hopefully maybe some of the people that are behind those projects are thinking of me or I cross their mind when they're thinking of who to cast. So yeah, I think we're just sort of drawn to each other. Um, and I've heard that you really want to do a movie set in space. <laughs> um, if you could do any horror movie, what would you do? I'm totally putting you on the spot. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I mean, it seems it seems easy now, but because this is a, a period piece, but I don't know. I do like the the 17 and 1800s in in the New World. I think there's something really scary about that. That it's sort of undiscovered terrain and and um I don't know so I would like to do another another thing like this I mean I only spent a couple of days on the last thing Mary saw you know I only shot for two or three days um so I would like to and I really liked what we did so I would like to sort of have a chance to do more of that so I guess since I have you here uh with Lords of Chaos um I, I really I'm really curious about uh the backlash that um came out of it or from the metal community you say you watched a lot of things online um what was your kind of takeaway from all of that it must have been so interesting from your side yeah I mean you sort of knew what we were getting into before we shot it like I I knew it was going to be 
hated by certain people and some people would appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I was sort of callous to that idea. It was no review was going to hurt my feelings when it came to Lords of Chaos. Um, so that's why I was able to sort of step out and, and read and watch everything about it. And yeah, I think the people who get it, get it. And, you know, it, it wasn't some sort of cash grab to me. I mean, it was, it was, I was attached to it for five years before shooting. So that was something I was trying to get done for years. And it was a, there's a real passion project. Um, and yeah, I was really happy with the way it turned out. Obviously I, I always look back almost every other day. I think like, Oh, we should have done that with it. And, but um, yeah, I, I, I had more fun than anything seeing reviews and, and negative and positive. I thought they were all interesting and, you know, any, any, person that stopped me on the street was pretty positive even the metal the metal guys uh, but yeah so I don't know it I, I enjoyed the whole experience front to back yeah it's super interesting because people keep talking about toxic fandoms and that's like the most toxic fandom I've ever seen online um oh I've yeah. never heard that never heard that phrase that's funny oh you haven't <laughs> no that yeah, would apply that would apply that would apply to the black metal community uh especially the book that it's based on i think a lot of people need to read that to kind of understand a lot of the background as well um and where it's all coming from which i think is yeah I think I, yeah anyway I'm just yeah interesting, interesting world yeah but i feel like some of your work gravitates towards religious work do you have like a um fascination with that yeah i'm start as we're talking i'm starting to realize there's like all these crossroads with what i'm i'm doing it's these true murders uh having to do with religion and things burning down uh you know waco and lords of chaos and, and uh yeah i don't know why i keep circling this sort of similar <laughs> subject matter um maybe i should branch out a little bit um but i don't know I, I, but or, or i should just keep going in that direction because i'm starting to get the hang of it i don't know we'll see is this stuff that you like to you know research or like watch documentaries on regardless yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love that stuff. And I'm, you know, I try to dig up some obscure ones too to maybe eventually develop a, a you know, a project out of it. So, yeah, I try to have my my ear to the ground when it comes to cool, true crime. Um, and I hear you're a Kubrick fan. Um, do you have favorites? I don't know if you're like a Shining fan or an Eyes Wide Shut fan. I, I love them all, but I mean, 2001 Space Odyssey is, oh. is the greatest thing to me. I mean, I saw it when I was maybe 14 and I didn't get it. And I was like, this is so boring. And then I rewatched it when I was maybe 20. And now I just watch it maybe once once a year. Uh, sometimes I play in the theater in New York so I can go see that. But um, it's just, it's also terrifying, just the the scope of it. Just it's the story of humanity and, and the universe. It's terrifying. Uh, yeah, Kubrick is obviously God, right? Uh, yeah, so it all comes back to space. This makes sense now. <laughs> right, yeah, full circle. I just want to ask you one last question, and I'm going to definitely put you on the spot. Um, if you could give me your three favorite horror movies. Oh, shit. So hard, I know. Hmm. Um, I feel like I'm going to be generic here. That's okay. Uh, well, The Shining, obviously everyone's top um i mean it's yeah saw one really is incredible oh the whole concept of the in the room with the dead man in the center oh, so good um oh a third one hmm. Hmm. Back. Oh, i can't think of anything Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I tried. Sorry. I had to. Yeah. I had to give it a go. Do you have any scream, favorite thrillers scream, or anything? Scream one. Yeah. Scream one. You kind of have to oh, say that, go. don't you? You met yeah. your wife on the set for Scream 4, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Was, that's uh, so cool. I think it was Wes Craven's last project, too, I think. Yeah. Um, Wait, she in the camera yeah. department or? Yeah, she was in the camera department. She she still is. We've worked together a couple times since, just through coincidence. Um yeah, yeah, we uh we have the screen mask with Wes Craven's uh, autograph on the forehead up on our wall. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thank you yeah. so much for your time. Sorry, I'm so disjointed. I was obviously very nervous talking to you, but I really appreciate your time and everything you're doing um, in the horror and thriller sphere. Um, yeah, and I hope you. I can't wait to see your new project coming out, and 
Um, I can't wait to see what everyone thinks about the last thing Mary saw. Cool. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to you and I'll keep watching your, your stuff. The last thing Mary saw is now on Shutter. If you want to check Rory out in that film, my gosh, what a cool guy. Rory, if you're watching this, thank you so much for putting up with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do. This was such a treat and such a highlight of 2022 already. Thank you for being here and thank you for supporting me. Have a great day. Stay safe and stay spooky. Bye, friends. <laughs>